And thank you for the kind invitation. It's my pleasure being back here. And uh, I'll uh, first just briefly introduce, if I can get this work. Ah, yeah. Where I come from, I come from uh, Aalborg, that is located in the northern parts of, uh, uh, of Denmark, from Aalborg University. And the wonderful thing about coming from there is that just outside the doors of our university, we have a full-scale experiment going on, how to uh, transform a, a society from fossil fuels into renewable energy. And we take benefits of that. We have our students and all of our research program working together with the industry just outside uh, our doors. I will come back. So we have a lot of wind turbines, as you know. We have 20% of our electricity supply coming from, from wind. But which may not be so well known is also we got a lot of CHP district heating and combined heat power from which we save a lot of fuel. Actually, half of our electricity uh, uh, is produced in combined heat power for, for, for the moment. What I will do today is uh, I'll try to make this within the 20 minutes. I'll say something about what we have already done in Denmark. I'll say something about what we aim to do in the future, and we actually aim to go for the 100% renewable energy solution, 100% uh, uh, fossil-free society is what we're heading at. This is our uh, parliament, our government uh, objective. And then I'll try to see something about how we may be able to achieve that objective, how, how we can, can do it. And uh, if I got the time, I'll say something about how we have started in the northern part of Jotling doing it. I may not have time to that, but it's not so big a problem because CERN will follow up and say something about how this is being done. Uh, and I've actually already been implementing on the, on the island of, of uh, Samsø. First, I will take you back to the... Uh, I should point, yeah, point the computer. Uh, I shall take you back to the uh, situation before the oil crisis of the 70s. This is a Danish primary energy supply from uh, 72, just before we had the oil crisis. It was all oil. We were totally dependent on oil for transportation, for the industry, for the heating of the houses, even for our power stations. We have just converted all our coal-fired power stations into oil when the first oil crisis uh, came. So we were in uh, a lot of uh, problems, both from a uh, supply uh, point of view, but also from an economic uh, point of view. And this started a long, uh, a, a long line of active energy planning and energy uh, policy making in the, uh, in the Danish society. Here are a number of all the official plans, but we also had a lot of discussion with alternative plans being made by NGOs, grassroots movements, and, and uh, university professors and stuff like that. So we had a lot of discussion. We had official plans uh, uh, advocating uh, nuclear, and then we had alternative plans saying we should have no nuclear, we should have renewable energy, and a lot of uh, discussion going on uh, like this for, for, for a number of years. Uh, one of the major things was also that in the 80s we had a, a severe economic situation where we have a, a lot of unemployment, a lot of foreign debt, and this oil crisis certainly did not help uh, that situation, just as many countries have uh, right now with the recent economic uh, crisis. Uh, I'll just cut it short, but we it got out of all this uh, actual energy policy, and this is the uh, primary the development in the primary energy supply of, of Denmark from the before the oil crisis and up to now. And as you can see, we were 100% or more or less uh, all oil in the beginning, but we have now transferred it into uh, oil, coal, gas, and renewable energy, so we have a better mixture. But it, what is much more important, important about this diagram is that you can see the, the total uh, the primary energy supply have not increased. It's, it's the same. It's, it's stayed the same for almost four decades. And that's quite an achievement if you compare to to uh, the rest of the world in which it has uh, increased. Now I know that the population have increased more in the rest of the world than in Denmark, but still measured per inhabitants. Uh, we have actually decreased uh, our primary energy consumption, including everything, transportation and, and everything. The primary success is within the combination of insulating the houses and expanding CSP, as I just said. 
so we can produce the same amount of electricity and heat with, uh, with much less uh, fuel compared to what we used to do. That is the primary success. Then we have had some failures in transportation and electricity and stuff like that. But altogether, it maps up as we've been able to stabilize the primary energy the supply. And along with that, we have also started uh, producing, as it is called when you take up oil and gas and burn it, then it's called producing energy uh, from the North Sea. And as you can see here, when we compared, we have actually had a net uh, export of, uh, of energy. And right now, we are the only member state of the 27 uh, European members that have a net export. But it's just about to balance, so it's... Uh, uh, even we have to, to give that up uh, as the years comes. And, uh, but of course, this has been very important to our uh, economy that we've been able to, to produce the energy ourselves. Uh, the bad thing about it is that if you sort of look at our reserves, we are just here in 2005, we have, we have peaked the production of oil and gas in the, in the in the North Sea, and from now on it's down the hill, and unfortunately it's fast down the hill. It's only a matter of, of a few decades, then we will have no uh, oil and gas left. And this is very much sort of the overall picture of, of Europe in general. Uh, we are running out of that little oil and gas we, we have had and been able to uh, produce. So that is really uh, the bad thing. And if we do not do something in Denmark, then we'll be back in the old uh, dependency of uh, oil and gas uh, again. And this is not only a, a matter of supply, it's also a matter of uh, economy. Here you can see how we used to have a deficit, and now we have a surplus on the trade of uh, energy uh, direct. And the bad news is that we know we cannot continue doing that. But uh, if we uh, take a look at the... I don't know why there's no... No? Okay. If I can go back. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, this is the diagram of the uh, energy technology that we have started to produce. We have started manufacturing wind turbines, but also a number of other things, insulation materials, uh, well with uh, biogas, uh, and a number of other things that we have been producing for ourselves, but they also started to export. And what we noticed is that the, uh, that the turnover of, of this export and the export of energy technology have raised uh, more rapidly than uh, compared to our uh, export in, in, in general. So we can see we have been making a major business out of uh, producing energy technology and exporting it. Uh, and also we can see the good news here is that the turnover of this industry is now in the same order of magnitude as our oil and gas production in the North Sea. It's a matter of 60 billion, that is around 10 billion uh, euro a year. And of course this goes up and down the oil prices, but it's something like that we actually uh, do here. So the, the bad news is that we will not be able to we'll, uh, to export gas and oil, but there's really no reason why we should not be able to still export a lot of energy uh, technology and still make a business out of uh, that. And that's also how we uh, see it in, in Denmark. We sort of have three challenges uh, and have had from, for several years. The one is, of course, the environmental thing, the climate change. The other one is the security of supply. We are dependent on oil and gas. Now we have been depending on our own oil and gas, and we know we're running out. So what about in the future? But it also uh, it also very important to us that this is uh, a way of making a living, uh, producing energy technology. This is some this is a, a way where we can produce something, make some jobs, and also uh, sell something. Uh, and the good thing about all this is that you can actually achieve all of it. You can uh, you do something about both the environment and security of supply and, uh, and creating uh, jobs and business opportunities if you uh, get rid of the fossil fuels and instead replace with, uh, with renewable energy. And that is sort of the background behind the parliament, parliament goal we have that was first formulated in 2006 by our Prime Minister at that time, Anders Fogh Rasmussen, he uh, said that we should create a society 100% independent from uh, fossil fuels. This has then afterward been adopted by his successor and also by the 
parliament and such, and a lot of uh, plans have been made on how to do that. I'll just, uh, and that is of course the big, the big issue here, because we have a, a, an objective, but when to do it and how to do it, uh, there's a lot of reason why it would be good to do it, but, but uh, then how to do it. A number of plans have been looking in uh, how to do it. We have had a commission looking it, so there's a recent uh, proposal for a, a political agreement that may be made or may not. Maybe we have an election coming up in Denmark, so uh, there's a lot of ne negotiations going on there, but there's also been a number of uh, other plans here. Uh, I'll just briefly mention one of them. And that was sort of the first plan that I was also involved with in doing, and that was a plan that was made by the Danish Society of Engineers. Because in 2006, when our Prime Minister announced this target, we have actually started on setting all this on the agenda by the Association of Engineers, because we have announced the whole of 2006 as an energy year, and involved the whole society, which have uh, around 67 uh, to South members in making a, a, a plan on how Denmark could uh, do good within uh, energy. And uh, we put forward three sort of targets. One was to maintain security of energy supply when we were running out of oil and gas. The other one was to do something about the carbon dioxide emission and the climate change. And the third one was to uh, see where we had some strongholds in industry and research uh, within the energy business so we could sort of uh, uh, create strategies to develop that, uh, that industry. And it was done in a way so we involved the whole uh, society and had a lot of meetings and stuff like that, putting people into what can we do with the houses, what can we do with district heating, what can we do with the transportation and, and things like that. There was more than 1,000 participants in more than 40 meetings and, and stuff like that coming up with all these proposals. <coughs> and there was also a steering committee. And then the steering committee had the problem with all this proposal, how to sort of make it fit into a, an overall coherent strategy and a plan for, for, for going forward. And that's where they hired us at Albert University to involve ourselves in doing that. And that was an extremely interesting work to do because we took all these proposals, put them into computer models and saw how they, they could uh, fit together. And that it turned out that there was a lot of uh, uh, contradiction among the proposals. So we were, uh, all the civil engineers, they wanted to insulate all the houses uh, and they didn't like district heating. And the district heating, they wanted to supply everyone with district heating and CHP and, and all, a lot of things like this. Uh, so we had to negotiate with all the different uh, people to put this into a plan. But we managed to, uh, to make a plan in which we also made a lot of uh, analysis on how to uh, integrate all the wind and stuff like that on an hourly basis. Uh, and then come up with a proposal that uh, looked like this. It's a proposal where we, in 2030, uh, halven the uh, primary energy supply and we, uh, we cut the carbon dioxide emission and we create a lot of uh, business uh, potentials. If we take a look at the business potentials, we, we try to emphasize in the Society of Engineers that it's not only about wind turbines. We have a number of things. Uh, within we have wave technology as you certainly have in and we also have fuel cells heat pumps there's a number of, of business opportunities in which you can actually uh, develop uh, a, a number of things if you make the strategy if you really push it forward and also sort of make a solid ground for the industry upon which to develop uh, in which they also can see that they'll have a market and, and, and a strategy to do it while we were doing that, and uh, the Society of Engineers only looked to 2030, and it was only about doing something about it, not about going for the 100%, then the Prime Minister, as I just uh, told you, announced the target of 100%. And then we had to do in the, in the society also a strategy for, for the 100%. And, um, uh, this is where we came into a bit of trouble because that is a hard one. You really need a lot of wind turbines and you also need a lot of biomass uh, to do this. And we had a lot of discussion in still has in Denmark how much biomass can be uh, used for energy because there's also food production. And we produce and export a lot of food in, in Denmark. Should we continue doing that or should we decrease that and, and make energy production instead? 
Uh, and, and there's also, if you go to a fossil-free society, then maybe you'll need that biomass resources also for materials and, and, and stuff like that. But we ended up with a strategy. I don't know why this picture is missing, but uh, at least here you can see we ended up with a, a strategy in which we, by 2050, and that was what we thought could be an appropriate target year to, to go for, could uh, identify a way of doing this in which we combined energy conservation, a lot of CHP and energy efficiency measures with then a combination of biomass and, uh, and wind and came up with a solution in which we are only using uh, bio, uh, domestic biomass resources in Denmark that will not interfere with our food production. Maybe we'll do some other crops, maybe we'll turn it around a bit, but we'll still produce the same amount of food and then it's only domestic resources, and then combined with a lot of wind, in which we will be able to go for 100% renewable energy in 2050, including transportation, also including airborne transportation. And we uh, are then able to fuel the aircraft that is fueled in Denmark. We have a big airport in, in Kastrup, as you've mentioned. We have not made any agreements with uh, all the pilots on if they uh, will be able to lift the aircraft or there on that sort of fuel we'll be able to provide them with because there will be some kind of hydrogen or stuff like that. So it's not totally solved, but at least the amounts are there. We're able to produce that sort of uh, uh, amounts uh, within this. Uh, uh, and that's why we think that our conclusion is that it's physically possible to, uh, to, to do this. We also think that uh, the first steps towards <coughs> 2030 is feasible, but the Danish society will not, it will, not, uh, it will cost more in the future to, uh, to provide you energy because either the, the fossil fuel will raise in price or you will do something like this, so it will cost more, but it will not cost more to do the renewable compared to the fossil uh, fuels in, in, uh, in our calculations. But you have the benefit that you'll develop an industry, you'll develop jobs, and you'll make more of the money stay within your own <coughs> country. Um, so um, that's that's the conclusion. I think I will uh, have to stop here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.